Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's episode, we're meeting up with Catherine, who perhaps just like you, has been dreaming for years of going tiny. She finally decided to make this dream a reality and combined all of her ideas into a beautiful tiny house filled with the things that are most important to her. Her new home features a giant garden, space-saving storage, and a thoughtfully designed floor plan that maximizes functionality and allows her to embrace a simpler lifestyle. But before we jump right in and take a tour, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell because that's the only way you're gonna know every single time we publish a new episode. I'm Catherine and this is my tiny house. I've been interested in tiny homes and alternative houses for probably 10 years, looking at everything from tiny houses to houseboats, tree houses. I had been dreaming about it for so long and I just didn't want to be 90 years old and say, you know, I really wish I had done that. I chose a tiny house on wheels because I loved the idea that it was mobile and if you wanted to move, you could. Uh, I have lovely friends here with property who welcomed me in. I just decided to make the move and make it happen. I did not build my tiny house. I had a wonderful builder in Vancouver, BC, Freestyle Spaces. Kevin, just lovely to work with, and he built my tiny house in the middle of COVID, no less. I was not able to go up to Vancouver and see it, but Kevin was really responsive and would send pictures, and he made it happen and uh, got my house. The space is pretty much filled with things that have a personal meaning to me or bring me joy or have a dual purpose. So if I look around, I can remember where that came from, why I kept it, because you have to really pare down to live in a smaller space. So I'm surrounded by things that I love. My tiny house is 24 feet long by eight and a half feet wide, 13 feet tall. So it's fairly standard size. We're gonna take a look at the garden area first. So I have a lot of pots because the ground here is pretty hard and rocky so it's just easier to put things in pots and I go a little crazy. I started off the first year with maybe four pots and now I don't know I have something like 40. It's, it's a lot but I love it. And then I have two raised beds that I built and they're my veggie garden. I also have a rain barrel set up which is super handy. In dry weather, I can use the, the water from the rain barrel to water plants and also kind of as a hand sink when I'm out gardening. I never wear gloves, so I wash my hands with it a lot. So one of my favorite things is my porch. My friend and his son built it for me uh, soon after I moved here. And it adds so much more living space and you can sit out there, rain or shine, well, not really shine because on hot days it gets about 100 degrees on my porch, so that's not fun. But I love it and sit out there often. My porch has a fire pit that's super nice in the rainy, chilly months to sit out here with a fire. My friends gave it to me for my birthday and I love it. Now I'll bring you into the inside of the tiny house. This is my living room space. I have a big couch and storage underneath the couch. My desk is over here uh, that I use for storage and also that's where I work when I work at home. I have under stair cupboards here 
And this is one thing that I did have uh, remodeled since I've lived here, just to make it fit my needs more. So the first big one is a big uh, closet to hang coats and things. And then these two have other storage and pull out drawers, which I love. This is my shoe storage. It holds most of my shoes. I have a few more in a drawer under the couch, but it's really handy. It keeps them all together and it holds quite a few. And it helps me if I want a new pair of shoes, I have to get rid of one of these because I don't have any other room for them. So just slides right in there. Easy peasy. And this used to hold the ladder to the guest loft, but it was super heavy really cumbersome and hard to pull out. So now I have an easy peasy collapsible ladder and I just pull it out and hook it up there when I wanna go upstairs, which isn't that often. It was thought of to be maybe a guest loft if I had visitors, but it's really mostly a storage loft. Typical kitchen, microwave, four burner gas stove with oven, Really nice big drawers here for all my stuff. I also have a mini split which keeps the place cool in the summer and warm in the winter. I did find that the heat rises. So in the winter, I wasn't feeling as warm as I wanted down here, but I have a small space heater and that helps on the really cold days and makes the place toasty. I love my refrigerator. It's almost full size. I mean, it holds a lot of stuff. And I have a pantry with really deep pull-out drawers and it holds a lot, so I love that. And a super big sink. When I first moved in, I thought, oh no, did I pick too big of a sink? But I love it. It makes life easy. I can pile up dishes if I want and it keeps the countertop free for other things. These are photographs that I made and I had turned them into decorative tiles and I thought it might be nice to have them as my backsplash of my sink. I keep all my dried stuff, rice and beans and things in jars on these shelves. This is really handy for added storage, plus I like how it looks. My bathroom has a sliding barn door with frosted glass in it. Uh, my original design idea was sort of like a shoji screen, Japanese shoji screen. So it's not really that way, but that's sort of where the idea came from. So my tiny bathroom isn't so tiny. I've had apartments back east where my bathroom was smaller than this. I have my separate composting toilet. A lot of my friends thought it was a little weird, but it's a slight learning curve and then it's really not that much different than any other toilet. The shower is pretty good size and I don't feel cramped. I did add a handheld shower head, which makes it so much easier when I want to clean the shower. I have my washer dryer unit in here and lots of counter space, more than I've had in any other bathroom. My medicine cabinet, more shelves for all of my potions, and a pretty big sink, which has an interesting story. I've always wanted an on top of the counter sink, but I didn't realize that with the counter this size and the sink up here would make it much taller. So it's a little bit tall for me but I've learned to love it. All right, now let's go take a look at the bedroom loft. So you can't stand in this loft, but I love it. It feels so cozy at night. It feels like a little nest and plenty of room to sleep in. It fits a queen bed, but I have a double. I wanted to have a little bit of room around the bed and I have lots of storage, two drawers, two cubbies, and a hanging closet. I just tend to grab whatever I want to wear the next day and bring it downstairs and get dressed in the bathroom. Because at first I tried getting dressed up here and it was a little tricky uh, to get dressed sitting down. <laughs> so that's how I worked it out. But um, I love my bedroom loft. And I do love my skylight. I didn't used to have fabric on it 
but I found in the summer it got really hot with the sun beating through the skylight and with all of the hours of, of sunlight it was kind of messing with my sleep. So I put the fabric in there and it, it does make it cozy up here. And also for any of you OCD people out there like me, um, I wasn't thinking about all the bird poop and stuff that was <laughs> would be sitting on the skylight so that as I'm laying in bed staring at it with no way to clean it. So that is something to think about. I think what I've learned is I know that I do like a minimal lifestyle and I enjoyed paring down and living more simply. I've also learned uh, that I can be a homeowner and get through any challenges that come up. If you want to go tiny, just go for it. I had been dreaming about it for at least eight years and finally decided that if I was going to do it, I better do it now because I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. But right now I just love living in my tiny house and my tiny garden and my tiny porch. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.